In this video, I'll introduce you to a straightforward procedure for measuring the strike and dip of a geologic surface using a Brunton compass that I've been using to teach students for quite a few years. This method involves an estimation step that should help you avoid one of the biggest pitfalls that folks encounter when they're learning to use a Brunton, and that is the tendency to pull out the compass and dive right into data collection without spending enough time thinking about what you need to accomplish. Indeed, by simply being a little bit more deliberate before taking out your compass, you will find yourself quickly developing the skills and confidence needed to make quality measurements in the field. Step 1. Choosing a surface and estimating your measurement. Once you've identified a planar geologic surface that you're interested in measuring, start by taking a step back from the outcrop itself and make sure that the surface you're planning on measuring is actually what you think it is. For example, if you plan to measure the attitude of bedding, verify that the surface you're selected is representative of bedding planes exposed in the outcrop, and that you're not inadvertently looking at a sedimentary structure, or perhaps a fracture or fault, or something else altogether. Once you're satisfied with your selected surface, begin the process of estimating what your strike and dip will be before you even get your compass out of its case. Estimate the strike by using geographic references to register your surface with respect to the cardinal directions. When estimating strike, recall that lines in geometry extend in both directions. So a line of strike will have two azimuths, each 180 degrees from one another. If you're a little rusty on azimuths, you might consider drawing a reminder on the back of your book. You can use this reminder, holding it right above the outcrop you're trying to estimate, to help you find the degrees you're looking for. After checking his cardinal directions, Rick believes that the strike of the surface he's interested in measuring will either be southwest, or between 90 and 180 degrees, or somewhere in the northwest, between 270 and 360 degrees. Rick is also pretty sure that the dip of the surface lies somewhere in the range of 20 to 30 degrees down from horizontal and is inclined to the north. Step 2. Measuring the line of strike. Now that Rick has estimated the strike and dip of his surface, he will begin by getting his Brunton compass ready to measure the orientation of the strike. First, make sure that the glass on the Brunton is flat. This will help to ensure that the compass is horizontal so the bullseye level in the corner of the compass body will work properly. Before you place the long outside edge of the compass body against the surface, remind yourself of where you visualized your horizontal line of strike during your estimate. Now, Firmly place the outside edge of the compass body against your surface along your line of strike, while making sure to keep the glass horizontal. Apply firm pressure on the compass body to keep the entire outside edge of the compass registered against the surface, while pivoting the compass body around until the bubble in the bullseye level is centered. Once centered, Rick will read the two azimuths indicated by both the black and the white ends of the compass needle. In this case, his compass needle is pointing towards 093, or 93 degrees, and 273, or 273 degrees. If done correctly, these two numbers should fall within the two possible ranges of azimuths that you resolved during your original estimate, and you will simply need to select the appropriate number depending on what convention your instructor has specified for your particular assignment. Step 3. Measuring the dip. The inclinometer is used to measure the dip of a surface. An inclinometer comprises three important parts. The first is the torpedo level, which is located atop the inclinometer inside the compass body. Opposite the torpedo level is an arm with a center line that is used with graduations for dip, two zero to 90 degree arcs, that are printed on the inside of the compass body. The position of the inclinometer is adjusted using an arm on the back of the compass. Remember, dip must be measured in a vertical plane that is oriented perpendicular to the line of strike. Similarly, the inclinometer and the rest of the compass must be oriented vertically with the torpedo level on top of the inclinometer for it to work properly. To ensure your compass is in the proper orientation, simply always keep the glass vertical when measuring dips. As an aside, it can sometimes be hard to visualize what orientation the compass should be in relative to strike especially when the dip that you're trying to measure is small. In these cases, it can be helpful to set the dip slightly higher than your greatest estimate and then rotate the compass from side to side to help find the maximum inclination. Another trick is to remove the compass altogether and pour a little bit of water on the outcrop or roll a pebble down the surface that you're trying to measure to see what the direction of true dip actually is. 
Once you're comfortable with the placement of your compass, manipulate the inclinometer until the bubble is centered in the torpedo level, then read the dip magnitude. In this case, it looks like Rick measured a dip of 29 degrees to the north. As another aside, if none of the available upper surfaces are suitable for measuring strikes and dips, please remember that it is also possible to use this same approach to measure strikes and dips using the lower surfaces. When measuring off of lower surfaces, use a field notebook or a map board to extend that surface out of the outcrop and then use the same approach that we just outlined. Step 4. Plot your measurement before you leave the outcrop. Once you've finished making your measurements, Use your geographic references to reorient yourself and to make sure that your measurement still makes sense. Before plotting your data, make sure that the lines of longitude and latitude on your map are parallel to the cardinal directions. We'll be using these lines as references for the degree graduations on your protractor. If your map does not have these lines plotted, use the coordinate system graduations around the border of your map to plot some light pencil lines for you to use. Next. Carefully locate your position on the map and plot it with a small clean dot. Now, place the origin or center of your protractor on the north-south line nearest to your location on the map. Starting at zero, rotate your protractor through the number of degrees needed to reach the strike you measured while keeping the center of your protractor centered on the reference line. Here, Rick first rotates from 0 to 90, and then the three additional degrees past 90 to get to 93, the strike he measured. Finally, all Rick has to do is slide his protractor down the reference line until the edge touches the point he plotted. Then, using a 1 centimeter line, he plots his line of strike using the edge of the protractor. A 2 to 3 millimeter tick is drawn perpendicular to the line of strike to indicate the dip direction. Finally, use a neat sans serif font to write the dip magnitude at the end of the diptych. The characters should be around 10 point font size and should always be oriented parallel with the bottom of the page. Step 5. Check your work. The final and most important task to perform before leaving the outcrop is to check your work. Use your geographic references to reorient yourself and your map and to look at the strike and dip you just plotted. Does the strike and dip symbol you plotted on your map match what you see in the outcrop in front of you? If yes, great job. If no, take a deep breath and a step back from the outcrop and start over again with step one. Don't worry, it might take you a couple attempts to get this down, but I assure you it will come and you will master it in short order. Good luck.